In this video, you will learn how to create native mobile applications with just vanilla JavaScript using Capacitor. We will be able to access camera, file system, or the haptics functionality to shake our application. And we're gonna develop our whole application on the web, add some Tailwind styling, and then go to a native application because you don't need to use regular react or any framework with capacitor js we can do all of this with just web technologies and vanilla javascript Capacitor is often mentioned in combination with frameworks like Angular or React in my other videos because we can easily transform our Angular, React, Vue web application to a native application using Capacitor and the included APIs. However, we can actually use Capacitor with everything. We can use it with just vanilla JavaScript and that is what I wanted to show you today. So instead of creating a new application with one of those frameworks, we will today start by running npm init at capacitor slash app. So this will ask us a few questions usually about the name. Let's call this my app. What is the directory? Yes, use my app. Then we'll ask for an app ID. So this is already hinting towards iOS and Android native applications. We don't really have to specify it now. I will just say, okay, com.galaxies.myapp. But of course, you can also change this later. Now I can dive into my app. So I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code, which I once again recommend for everyone. And when we're in the app, we can run npm install to first of all set up all the dependencies. As we can see, they were not installed automatically. That's why this uh, first command was so fast. However, we can also take a look at what we got. So we got a capacitor config. This is required and in here we got the app ID so we could change it in here. We got an app name which usually appears under our application. Some little settings that are not really important right now and a section with plugins. Now, this is using uh, Vite as we can see and we can just run npm run start now to bring up the web preview of our application and here it is. This is our Capacitor web application with just basic JavaScript. And we're gonna work in this application and make it ours. So what is displayed right now? We can just check this out in the source folder. We have an index file. And in that index file, we got some import, not super interesting, but we got the Capacitor welcome on the Capacitor welcome JS file. So this JS file defines a custom element. It can be somewhat confusing um, to understand what is going on in here. It is a nice example, but I actually will remove that file. I'm going to start with a blank uh, app again. However, there's another thing that I want to do right now, and that is installing Tailwind, because if we don't use anything, we don't really have a great UI styling. So let's install Tailwind. By the way, are we using the right zoom level for your eyes? Yes, we do. So npm install as a development dependencies, Tailwind post CSS and auto prefixer. And then we can follow this up by npx tailwind init. So this will create our Tailwind configuration. And then that Tailwind configuration, we just need to specify where Tailwind will find our files. So those will be on the source. It should be HTML and JavaScript files. We're actually not using TypeScript today. So uh, that is also something new for me. Uh, I usually like to use it, but we're gonna keep it really, really simple, as close to the metal as possible. Additionally, we need a post CSS dot config dot js to make this work in our flow we're going to add tailwind css as an auto prefixer in here and as a final step we will go to the styling file which is already included here so let's add the tailwind classes in here now with that in place we should be able to my understanding uh let's see npm run dev again uh oh no npm uh run start of course and then we're going to heat over to the index file and in that index file i'm going to put this to the side da, 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 da. maybe we're going to swap sides i don't know maybe let's add an h1 yes test font bold text for xl underline this just as a confirmation that tailwind was installed in our application so this is the beginning of our app 
What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get rid of this capacitor welcome and set up everything that we need on our own. So this is gonna be an interesting journey. I'm gonna remove this. Um, in our index file, we know, uh, don't really have anything. We have awesome capacitor app. Uh, we're loading our styles. and We're loading to the Ionic progressive web app elements. That's gonna be fine and helpful in the end. So the first thing I added to this application was a navigation bar because a navigation bar totally makes sense as we're going to reuse that across different uh, views in the app. So I created a new file here called navbar.js and what we're going to do with that navbar is we're going to use the API to define a custom element. I'm going to call this custom navbar. And then I'm gonna extend the uh, extends the HTML. Oh, that is actually pretty nice. Thank you, Copilot. That was a nice code completion. Uh, we're closing it. We're closing this. So what this does, it basically attaches a shadow root element to our page uh, with a slot, so we could render some content in it. For now, let's just add our file by loading it in the body. So we're going to load the navbar and then we're going to add our custom navbar. And that should hopefully yeah, display a dark navbar up here. Now we can inject some content into it. So I could have whatever my app in here and it would be injected into our custom component. Now this is just the beginning of that bar and we can style it however we want. So in my case, I added a bit more CSS and I added some slots. So this is what I ended up for the navbar. Um, we have the host element, which is by the way, using a CSS variable. So we probably need to set this while we don't have this. Uh, we could make this um, just use red. So then it should appear. No, it doesn't. Uh, we're going to get to that in a second. No worries. And what I also want to define is a traditional navbar with a starting slot, a title slot, and an end slot. So we don't really, actually we could make this like the main slot, I guess. Then it would inject our end, but I want to keep it like this. It's following somewhat like the Ionic setup of a navigation bar, because the Ionic navigation bar looks somewhat the same with the different slots. So if I want to use it like this, I would I say, okay, please inject my title in the H in the title slot. And in the end slot, I will also add a little button. We're going to see to that in a second. For now, we're going to keep it like it is, but we still don't see our custom navigation bar. So why don't we see it? Well, the problem is that we're using the background color um, navbg because we want to make the application work with the Tailwind styling and Tailwind doesn't really work well with shadow components. So the fix to inject styling from Tailwind into this looks like this. We can now go to our style and for the root element, we define a CSS variable, exactly the nav BG. And I can now give this a random color and it should normally appear on our page. Of course it doesn't because, well, I messed up most likely something. Uh, so we got the body, we got it, this. Do we see any problem here or should we uh, reload this once? Oh, the bar is really there. The bar just has no background. Um, so that definitely confirms that I messed up uh, the styling of our navigation bar. Uh, the background color is set to dash dash nav bg and I set this, um, yeah, probably should set this like this. Okay, there we go. Here we got our custom navigation bar. Uh, in fact, I'm going to now move it to this side. I think this feels more natural for you. So keeping it there and then we got our code next to it. Nice. Now. I don't want to use a static color like this. I want to use the color from Tailwind because we're going to have buttons using the Tailwind theme. So I'm going to use the theme function and then use colors dot blue dot 600. And if I use it like this, it voila, it turns into this. So this is the starting point of our native application. 
we can reuse this bar and we can use other titles on different screens, which makes it really nice. Now, I don't want to dive into the topic of navigation because actually it's not that uh, easy with vanilla JavaScript. You can do this in an easy way if you don't have a lot of requirements like this. You can just say, okay, this is my info HTML. I'm going to copy everything that I had in my index HTML and I'm going to put it into the info page. So I'm going to say this is uh, some app information. And then I don't want to use the end slot. I uh, actually want to use the start slot to go back to my slash and just say uh, back. So with that in place, I can go over to info, see the app information page and go back. However, um, this actually won't work everywhere. So I'm going to just add for simplicity a little app container so we see a bit more uh, content on that page. In fact, I don't see any uh, content yet. Oh, I should probably hit save. Why is my content not displayed? Today is really a, a great day to mess up my application. Um, oh, it's probably hidden. Yeah, we don't have that yet. Oh, well, then let's let's remove it for now. So the problem is this will work nice while doing the development with a Vite server. However, it won't work once you build your application for a native a real device or a simulator. In that case, you're going to have to head over to the Vite config and under the build, we're going to have to add another block for rollup options. And we're going to import the resolve function from path. So just add resolve from path. And then we see we need to tell Vite especially which files to include if there are more files. And with that, it won't change anything for the dev environment, but you're going to notice later on a device that this is actually required. Now, at this point, we have a basic capacitor application using some vanilla JavaScript and we have our first navigation bar. But now let's see how we can use real capacitor functionality in our application. For that, I'm going to add three plugins from capacitor. So I'm going to install the capacitor camera, the preferences and the haptics plugin. Uh, I'm going to show you quickly what those plugins are about. So here we go, plugins. The camera plugin is all about, of course, using the camera of a device. It's pretty easy to use. The preferences plugin is used to easily store some data and inside native applications, this will use user defaults and iOS and shared preferences on Android, which makes it a great package. We're going to use this to now capture some image information and then store the images in that application. In a real scenario, you might also want to embrace file system and just write the files to the file system. However, we're going to go with this because then we use one capacitor plugin more and it's actually pretty easy. Finally, for fun, I also added the haptics plugin, which is really a native functionality that won't work on the web. But this gives you this little impact of a device like the vibration if something happens. So with those in place, um, let's create something in our application. So I'm going to bring in some code. Again, you can check out all the code. Uh, or most of the code on the uh, article tutorial link below this video. What we're going to need is one new file. I'm going to call this main.js. We could also probably call this whatever JS. And I'm going to add the main.js and some code to our index page. So here we go. I'm going to add the main.js and I'm going to add some input fields. A description, a button to save images, and we're going to have a button to actually capture an image. Where is the button? Well, we probably need a bit more styling for that button to appear. So let's add the following to our styling. There we go. Putting this in here. Now, I intentionally used the add apply to keep the HTML as easy as possible. You see, I used a few Tailwind utility classes for the description label already and it gets quite long. So I wanted to keep this for you uh, as short as possible and then have the, well, all the utility classes that we need for a button here in the CSS file. Additionally, I added a little bit of margin top um, so it's not covered by our bar. And then we do have this capture image button. We have a description field and the save image button down here. 
Now, what we don't have is real functionality. So let's add real functionality to this by going to our main JS. I'm going to get started by importing the capacitor plugins that we added. And actually, yeah, actually that should be fine. This is our storage key where we will find our elements. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to handle the click to the uh, capture image element. We can do this just by adding a document get element by ID and adding an event listener. Really, this is standard JavaScript stuff. But again, we can use Capacitor with vanilla JavaScript. So we're using the camera API to grab the image data and then we display it and set the data to our image and then we hide the upload box. Let's see if this already works. I actually don't know. Did we, did we already do this? Oh yeah, so at the bottom it brings up this sheet, um, there we go, it brings up this little sheet on the bottom because I haven't specified the source. If you want to skip that, you can just say, um, instead of prompt, we could say camera or uh, library, I think, photo library. Uh, but I'm going to keep it with prompt, That's actually nice. So I'm going to say, let's take a picture, I'm fancy today, and to take that picture, it usually requires the Capacitor Progressive Web App Elements package to display this nice little overlay, which has quite the delay. Um, we get this overlay because we added to the index file the import to the Ionic Progressive Web App Elements package already. This was automatically included with a template, so we go with that. And I'm going to hit the capture button because it actually takes some seconds to capture. There we go, perfectly captured. I'm going to go with that. I'm hit the green button and then we have the image in our application. In fact, this can look a bit nicer uh, as an overlay if you're on a big, bigger screen or I could also just select an image if I wanted to, but I'm going to go with that image for now and hit save. And there we go. There we got our image. Cool. Now, once we got that, we need another function, another click handler or listener to our save image button. On click of that button, we're going to trigger something interesting. Let me bring in the code and then we're going to walk through this. So on clicking the save image button, we're going to grab the image information and we're going to grab the description field. Then we're going to go to Capacitor Preferences and say, hey, please give me all the information stored under the storage key. This will return some value if there is information in uh, storage present. What we need to understand is with Capacitor Preferences, we can only store strings. So everything that we put into it needs to be JSON stringified and everything that we get out of it needs to be parsed back to a real object. So in our case, uh, let's probably start here because the first time we run this, there's no data and preferences. So we create an array with a new image and description as an object. And then we say, please set the JSON stringified array as the new key for storage key. In the other case, when we do it the second time, third time, we can load that data and then push to that array and set it again. So that is the whole logic block we got here. After that, it's just about resetting the image text area uh, and the information and also displaying the upload button box again. And finally, I want to uh, emit a new event. So we're using dispatch event with a custom event because later we will also display a little list below this. And the list won't magically update. We're not using Angular or React, so we need to take care of all this ourselves. So this is where this little event will come in handy. And finally, we're going to use the Haptics plugin on a native device to trigger a little vibration. Now, with all of that in place, I should be able and I could also take a photo. Can I use a WebP file? Oh, yeah, I can use this. A cool illustration. I'm going to hit save image and it disappears. Where is the image? My image is gone. No, we can actually find this. So if you're on the web, you can just open your developer tools. And you can go to uh, your application and somewhere over the rainbow we should see capacitor storage my images and in this object we have an array with one object description a cool illustration and the image stored as a base 64 string and just like that we could now add more images 
do we want to add a second? Yeah, oh, let's do a second. Let's snap a picture for this to make sure that this part also works. Um, in the past, this really always broke my camera. I'm gonna smile. Oh, that was, oh wow, what a creepy smile. Uh, creepy smile. Okay, I'm gonna hit save and there we go. So now with the information stored here, we should be able to load this. And once again, in the end, we're gonna take this to a mobile device. For now, we're just gonna keep developing our app in the browser because that's the cool thing about Capacitor. Most plugins and APIs that Capacitor has simply work wherever the web runs. So we can just develop our application here and then later take it to a real device. Now, uh, what we wanna do as well on our list page is later share the file. So on a native device, we need the file system and the share plugin because we can't just share a base64 string. Actually, at that point, we will write the file to the file system and then share that URI with the world because that works. I don't know why we just can't directly share the base64. It would be a lot easier, man. I don't know. Could we, could we probably create a plugin for that? That would be cool. Anyway. Um, what we're gonna next do is we're gonna create another file. I'm gonna call this photo list.js. And on that photo list, we're gonna create another of these elements. So it is real fun to create these uh, custom elements. And I'm gonna get started with a basic uh, implementation here for the photo list. So we're gonna start with some imports. Uh, we're going to import our storage key from the main file and then we once again define a custom element that I call my photos uh, using inner HTML, just a list and a button. And I could already go ahead with this now and put it into my index file. I'm going to load this. So what was it called? Photo list. Yes, like this. And then I can hopefully, I think I can just load this. Uh, under my photos, there we go. Yes, stored photos and delete photos. It already renders, looks looks okay, not too bad. So on that photo list, I wanna know load all the stored files. And we can do this using a function in here called uh, connected callback. So async connected uh, callback. And in that file, uh, in that function, which is called on a start, so let's lock this, start, and we should be able to actually see that lock. Uh, there we go. So here it is, the lock of our photo list. This is called right in the beginning of our custom element when it is initialized. So what we wanna do in here is, as I said, load all the elements. To do this, um, we're gonna call a function to create the list and then we're gonna also listen to the reload event and the delete button. But first of all, we're gonna create the list and creating the list is as simple as going through the preferences that we stored. So we're grabbing the preferences in our create list function and if we get back the value, we're gonna grab our list element that we added up here. So here we got our list, and then we dynamically add all the entries. Again, no framework, no React, no Angular. Uh, we're gonna create our own DOM elements. With uh, We attach a function to every element to later share it. Uh, we attach some styling classes. Then we create an image and set the image to our element and finally append the new element to all this. So after going through this code, I think you understand why we at some point came up with frameworks. <laughs> anyway, um, we also need a function to remove all the items again. So this will query our item selector and remove all the elements because if we want to update our list, uh, it's not that easy, so I remove all the items and then I just call create list again. And this is also how we listen to the custom element that uh, custom event that we dispatched before, which is quite interesting way to handle the like reactivity in our application. Also, we got a delete button which will call the remove function on the preferences plugin. So this will remove everything that we stored and also remove the current DOM elements. And finally, we need our share functionality. So I'm gonna add this, let's see, where is create list finished? 
there. So let's add should share. Uh, oh, by the way, that needs to. Um, ooh, I messed up. I probably does this belong. Um, oh man, I think it belongs here. Uh, what are we gonna see? Uh, it's probably oh, it's displaying already something that is nice. Um, I assume yeah, the share functionality is not yet working. Um, it's mostly mad um, because can we just use like JavaScript? Uh, pretty uh, something is happy unhappy with my linting. Everything about this is actually valid. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but the syntax highlighting is giving me a lot of trouble right here. So let's see. Definitely, definitely everything is ready. We, we got this up here and we should be able to uh, have the should share uh, besides create list. Uh, remove items, create, did I edit it inside? No, I didn't add it inside. It's just mad about me in general. Okay, so what ChitShare does is it creates a custom file name, then it writes the file to the file system. And again, Capacitor API is working on the browser and on a native device. Then we read that file using the URI, and then we call the share plugin to actually share it. Now the problem is on the web, this actually doesn't work well because the web has not really great implementation for the share plugin yet. For that, we're gonna have to see how it looks in our native app. But before we do that, let's talk about one thing. We do see the stuff in here, but it looks somewhat ugly. And again, the reason is we can't easily inject our styling with Tailwind in here. So in order to overcome this, we can use an ugly way by injecting Tailwind into the different parts. Now I define on some elements a part. So set attribute, part item, part image. And by targeting the part of our element, we are able to inject the styling. So now we do have a nice red button uh, and we do have the illustration with a shadow in sort of a card. So this is our somewhat finished application. We have done everything so far on the browser, which is pretty interesting because if you develop your application in the browser, it's usually the fastest way with live reload and everything that we got. However, you now want to build a native application and yes, I do understand that. So let's do this. The first step to build a native application with Capacitor is to install the Capacitor Android. Uh, where's my installation? and the Capacitor iOS packages. Once you get this, you should run an npm run build because Capacitor will look for the dist folder, the build folder that is specified in your Capacitor config, the webdir dist. And in that folder, we can now also, by the way, find our cool application already built with JavaScript and everything. So this could be hosted wherever you want. Now, we can now go ahead using the local installed Capacitor CLI and run npx cap at Android to add the Android platform. And then we can do the same to add the iOS platform. So I'm gonna give this a bit more space and then we're gonna see to the side, we now have a new Android folder and we now also have a new iOS folder. And whenever we make changes in our app, we could now run npm run build and follow that up by npx cap either sync or copy. So copy only copies over the web uh, stuff. Sync does a bit more. So if you wanna be, um, the safe way would be to use sync all the time. It's just a tiny bit slower. Now, um, I can also run this by running npx cap run iOS. So we're going straight through a native application. This will ask which device I wanna use. Let's use the iPhone 14 Pro. And this is running the Xcode build, but I haven't touched the native uh, project so far. That, by the way, will come back as a little problem. So I'm kind of I can already uh, give you a little spoiler warning. This won't work completely. The problem is that we used a capacitor plugin, uh, or actually a few, and some of these plugins require native permissions. Uh, by the way. 
uh, you can see the can't see this it's outside of the window but here is actually already the application and this is your native application congratulations um, this is pretty nice but we're gonna get back to that in a second for now quickly talking about permissions so for every plugin you can usually find a block about permissions in this case the io the camera plugin requires some permissions uh, for ios and also for android for ios we can head over to the app uh, info plist and no i still don't want something and input something like this for the different keys and define a string make sure you're using a reasonable string if you submit this later to apple for Android, we can do the same. It's under app source main Android manifest. And in the Android manifest down here, we got the permissions. So here we can just extend this. Okay, now our application looks pretty nice, but again, uh, it won't work. So if I try to capture an image, it will just crash. Um, or in this case, it's just stuck because I don't see the error log, but it's not working at all. So we need to apply the changes here, but also we see something else and that is this top notch area. We are already, uh, or we actually, I kind of made a sneaky little patch for that, that you probably didn't notice. Um, so in our navigation bar, I made the change to have the host element use a distance from top using the safe area inset top. This is required and also for the bottom you can use the safe area inside bottom to position elements offside those where you have like a home button or the status bar or anything to uh, count in that area. However, it usually looks ugly because we don't have a colored uh, block here now. So as a little fix, let's do this. In our index HTML, I'm just gonna add up here a block, the app navbar notch. No, I'm gonna, gonna put this up here. And I'm uh, also doing this for the info page. And then we go to our styling and fix that little CSS by positioning this element absolutely at the top fixed um, and giving it just the height of the safe area and then applying our blue background. Now, let's go through the process of updating our application. So as I said before, um, npm run build, that should build our app, npx cap copy, that should copy all of our web assets or, uh, and now I could run the application again with the npx cap run iOS or let's do npx cap open uh, iOS. So you also see the native Xcode editor. Of course, if you're developing native applications, you need to have these tools installed, meaning Android Studio for Android and Xcode for iOS development. And of course, if you want to build iOS applications, you usually want to have a Mac. Yes, there are services uh, where you can... Hello? Why are you so slow opening my workspace? Um, there are some services to build your app in the cloud, like uh, AppFlow from the Ionic team, but it's usually it's usually better to also uh, have this locally. Why is Cap not opening my iOS project anymore? Okay, there we go. So if I wanted to just deploy it from here, I could now go ahead, just click run. It has already selected the iPhone 14 Pro. I could now also plug in my own iPhone. Um, let's see if this also works. But if you want to deploy your app, your own device, you need um, an account for the Apple uh, developer program. So I'm going to try and use my team signing and then also put this on my device here. But one more thing that we already see is we fixed the top notch area with our little blue hack. So I can go between those. And I can also capture an image and this is now using the iOS styling because this is capacitor. It's also using uh, the adaptive styling. I'm going to go with from photos. Yes, I'm going to allow access to everything. And then I'm going to also at the same time try and bring up my device so we see everything. The images in the iOS simulator are actually super big usually. But here is the app on my device as well. Let's see, uh, we, do we probably still have a problem? I don't think so. 
brings up the native camera. So we have now gone from capacitor web to a native iOS application using the camera pretty quickly. And here is uh, my image. I'm just going to call test. I'm going to hit save image and it is displayed down here. I don't know why it's not working yet on the simulator. I think the image is just super big. So I'm going to move this out and uh, just show the real preview because this is quite fascinating to me. We have built the full application on our browser using web technologies. Um, and now we just used the native application here uh, and it just works. One thing I think we haven't seen working is the share API. So let's click on this. And yes, I am able to, uh, I'm going to email this myself. This is going to be interesting. So I'm going to email this myself. Yes, always alone. I got, a, by the way, a little shortcut to send an email to myself. Which, and here we go. Here is the email I just sent to myself, including the native image. So we have taken our web application to a native device. We've captured an image with a camera and also used the share plugin, which wrote that file to the file system. So we didn't uh, went through every single detail there, but it was just a combination of making um, making our share plugin work with a file system. This block was basically essentially to write the base 64 into a real file and then get the data by using its URI and then attaching that URI to the share plugin. Uh, it felt a bit strange, but as you can see, it worked just perfectly. And with that, we have completed our app. You now have a native application that you can basically take to the app store if you wanted to. So one additional thing that you might want to check out is the capacitor assets plugin. Uh, probably let's, let's do this. Let's do this to wrap up the video. I'm going to add the capacitor assets plugin to my project. And then I'm going to bring in, um, two assets, um, copy folder. So I'm going to bring in an icon. Uh, do I have an icon and a splash screen? Uh, oh man, why is the installation so slow today? I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless, so we got the icon and we got the splash screen. And with that in place and with a plugin installed, I can now run NPX capacitor assets generate. And this is generating my native assets. And if I check back in the Xcode project under uh, app assets, yes, I should see exactly my app icon being applied. So if I now uh, put this app to my device, uh, let's do this again. Uh, I will probably, uh, it's probably probably i should put this to the simulator that would be better because i already used this no it's actually working uh oh come on for a second i saw it <laughs> well uh it definitely did add the icon i can do this uh, on an iphone as well sometimes you get caching issues if you ran the app before then um, Xcode or your simulator won't correctly update. So then you just remove the application again and install it again. But we got this. You can, of course, also use Android at the same time. So just open Android Studio uh, following exactly the same setup. So instead of cap open iOS, you could run cap open Android or cap run Android to run it on an emulator or your connected Android device. And with that, I think I finally crushed my computer by opening multiple simulators and views and, and Visual Studio Code. Um, but hopefully, there we go. We finally see our native application built with just Capacitor accessing native device functionalities and otherwise relying on web standards. All right, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this kind of different approach to building native applications. I just wanted to show you that yes, you don't need any big framework to use Capacitor. You can throw in Capacitor in pretty much any web application. And as we've seen, it works actually pretty fine with just vanilla JavaScript. So go give it a try. You can find the code linked below this video. And of course, also check out the Ionic Academy if you're interested in learning more about how to build cross-platform applications with web technologies like Capacitor, Codover, or also Ionic. So hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like and subscribe and I'm going to catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.